Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel for a new video. In today's video, I want to show you five Ableton features that I've been using forever, but I noticed a lot of Ableton users don't know about. If you didn't know some of them, please let me know in the comments and consider sharing this video with a friend who might find it helpful. Let's get it started. The first feature that is often overlooked are Ableton additional packs. If you buy Ableton Live Suite, and I highlight the word buy, other than the stock library that comes with the basic installation, you also have access to additional packs that you can download both from the website or straight from the app. What I see is that a lot of Ableton users often rely very soon on external plugins, not allowing themselves to experiment with this powerful and high quality content, which are the additional packs. On Ableton you can access to external packs by going to uh, the packs folder here. You can see I have some of them already downloaded but I also have 40 available packs. If you have a look at them you can see some of them are very big size so they come with a lot of sampled instruments, sample stuff, high quality content and trust me you find a lot of inspiration in them. My favorite ones are for example the creative extensions which is a pack with additional sound effects which, that you don't find in the stock library or also the latin percussion pack which comes with a lot of clips that you can use to build your percussions but these clips are midi clips and drum racks so you can also change the sequence you can change that they are very versatile you can personalize them quite a lot if you want to know more about these packs because here you don't have many info about them you can go to ableton.com you access your own profile and you can see here all of the packs that are included in your license you click on one of them and you see what's included the scythe you can hear some and demos so very cool stuff the second feature is simple but uh, useful both for beginners and advanced producer whenever you want to know about a device function about a knob about a parameter and you don't want to look for a tutorial or read the manual does really someone still read the manual um, you can just uh, have a look at the info view which is on the lower left corner of ableton you just press on this little triangle and you see the info view the info view is just just a quick guide so it won't to go in depth on the on the parameter for that you will need to read the manual or find a tutorial on the internet but for knowing just the basics of that parameter it is really handy you just need to hover with your mouse on the knob on the function on the menu and it will tell you what it is so if you didn't know about this now it will save you some time now let's move to some more advanced feature and let's talk about hot swapping and applying it to grooves on Ableton you probably noticed that that on every device but not only you find this little symbol with two arrows in circle this symbol is called hot swap function and it's made to try different options different alternatives for for that device or for other parameters so let's suppose you want to change this phaser guitar preset with another one you just press on the double arrow here and automatically you get the phaser flanger presets menu so you can double click on another one and it automatically changes or you can even try another device so for example hybrid reverb and it changes it saturate whatever and then you press escape and you get the last one you selected or you can go back with command Z of course where this hot swap function comes very handy is when you want to test different grooves so let's suppose I made my loop in this track and on every MIDI clip I assign the same swing in this case let's go on a clip let's have a look here I have the the MPC 16 swing 53 okay at a certain point I want to test different swings to feel to see how they feel in my track so one way to change all of the swing is selecting all of the clips like this so I press shift I select all of the clips I go down here so that I open the clip menu and I select the groove here or I select a different groove 
from the grooves menu and I drag and drop it here in the groove section. But this is not the best way to do it because if you have a very complicated project selecting all of the MIDI clips, you might select also clips where you don't want to assign that swing, it might become a mess. So the best way is getting to know this thing on Ableton called the groove pool. You open the groove pool by clicking on this symbol here and you open this menu where you find all of the swings that you are using in your project. In this case, I'm just using the MPC Swing 53, so this is the only one that I see, but you could have other ones that might not be in, in use in this moment in your project. If you have a look now, I drag and drop another swing, but it's grayed out because it's not used on any clip. So what you can do to quickly swap the swing on every clip that is using it is by clicking on the hot swap function, going to see if you find another swing that you might like. So for example, I want to try the 16th swing 59, double clicking on it. And you can now see here, I have now the 59. So I press escape, I go to see on any clip I want, and you can see now it's loaded with the 59. If I want to go, I can play the track, hear how it sounds, hear if I like it, or going back, or even trying another swing. So for example, the Logic 1658 or the Double Down, whatever you want to try, you can do it, you can go back, you don't have to select any clip, you just have to press the hot swap button and that's it. Also here, you find the other options for the swing, but this is not something we'll talk about in this video. If you want to know more about the quantized timing, random, etc., I made a video a few years ago about swing, and you can find it here in this tab and have a look at it. Before moving to the next tip, guys, please consider subscribing to the channel if you didn't yet and liking the video. Super easy on your side, super helpful for my channel. Thank you. The fourth Ableton feature that I want to talk about is how to create defaults. Creating default settings is super easy on Ableton and it's super handy to boost your workflow, avoiding to do the same operations on every track over and over, like setting your EQ in your favorite initial settings or setting the compressor in sidechain mode if you often use it to do it, or any other device in your favorite setting that you use most of the times in your project. You can create default settings for instruments, effects, tracks, but also more advanced default settings like what happens when you drag and drop a sample in a MIDI track, if it opens up in a simpler, in a sampler, with which settings when you drag it and drop it in a drum rack. So a lot of defaults that are very advanced, but also very useful if the Ableton default setting is not what you want to use. Let's see, for example, how to create a default for the Q8, which is the effect that I use most on Ableton. By default, when you load it on Ableton, it loads up like this. In my case, my favorite initial settings for a EQ, when I, want, when I load it, I want to load it on, I want to load it with the first curve set to a high pass, the second and third set to bell curves, like it's on default, the fourth to a high shelf, and the fifth to a low pass, but off. So so if I need it, I switch it on. If I don't need it, I leave it off. And with the frequency set to a high level like this. So when I switch it on, it, it does like this. So once I've set it, I can set this as default pre preset by right clicking and save as default preset. So now if I delete this and I load it again, it loads up like this. But you can do the same with audio tracks. So if, for example, my default audio track, if I press command T, it loads up in this way. So EQ, filter and utility already on my track, EQ and filter are off because not every time I want to use them, but if I need them, they are there. And to do this, you can just uh, load your favorite effects on the track and then right click on the track, save as default audio track, and you can do the same for MIDI track. My default MIDI track is exactly the same. But as I said, there are more advanced default settings. I made a video on Patreon on how to boost your workflow and one of the topics was creating defaults. So if you want to get more in depth on this topic and you want to get your workflow boost, for sure that video will help you and will get you going every time you start a new project. Find the link to my Patreon if you want to subscribe in the description.
description. The last Ableton feature that I want to talk about is probably my favorite and it's about not only saving MIDI clips with the pattern that they contain, but also saving the instrument of that channel, the audio effects that are on that channel, and all of this with a simple drag and drop of the MIDI clip. This is another feature that I talk about in depth in the video about workflow on my Patreon. So again, if you want to have a look at it, you can join us in the minimal community through the link in the description. Let's suppose you created a very nice hi-hat pattern in a track of yours, and that pattern includes a certain sample, it includes a certain chain of audio effects that give to the hi-hat pattern a certain flavor, and you supposedly want to use it on your next track. So the first way you might come up with is by simply turning that loop into audio. So you export the audio and now you have an audio loop. But going with audio loops is very limiting because once something is turned into audio, you don't have much editing power in your hands. Try this instead. On my computer, I have a folder that I call the Ableton presets. This folder, I also located it inside my Ableton menu. So I have it here. In this track, I made this hi-hat pattern that sounds like this. So I have a simpler with this sample in, I have this EQ8 with these settings, and I have a phase guitar preset and a auto pan. If I want to save this, I just simply take this MIDI clip and I drag it and drop it in my Ableton presets folder. So once you drag it, it, uh, it creates a folder where you have the MIDI clip, so I can call it I had pattern. And once you click, you press uh, enter, you will see it also collect the sample. So you find the sample here and you also have the project folder which now is called Untitled Clip Project but I usually rename it with the name of the project because usually I remember in that project what I used which type of sound so if I want to use it in a new project I, I say okay I use that hi-hat in that project so I go look for it in this case I called it PM and here I might save also other things so supposedly I like my baseline the baseline that I used it the sound whatever it's in the chain so simply drag and drop it in the same folder and I call this baseline once I want to recall this uh, thing on a new live set for example I simply create a new MIDI track. Be careful, the MIDI track needs to be empty, so I delete all of the effects on it, all of the clips if I have, and then I simply drag and drop, and it opens the whole chain, and if I press play, it starts playing the same thing. But the cool thing is that now, if I want to simply change this sample, I can select another hi-hat, for example this, and now it has another sample or I can change the effects. So full freedom on what you have. And this is what I want every time that I make music, full freedom. So this guys was the last feature that I wanted to show you. I hope this video helped you. As I said, if you saw some feature that you didn't know, let me know, I'm curious to see. Or if you know some other features that you think nobody knows, please share it in the comments. Thanks for watching the video. If it helped you, share it with your friend. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.